Um, we're did, <laughs> yes, I love it. I love. <laughs> I love. I love it. Um, okay, so you just talked about foliar. That's perfect because that foliar was the last applications one. are a big deal. Yes. And it's well proven that foliar applications work. Now we got a lot of guys doing different tests, you know, tissue tests, sap tests, all these other tests. You spray a good foliar chelate on a plant, and you can immediately see it increase in the plant. Mm -hmm. Now the soil, it has a lot of things going on. We got base sats. We got different ratios. We have uh, molders chart showing the competing nutrients. When you apply your your fertilizer to the ground, it's it's fighting. There's biology that's going to eat it. There's cations that are going to bind it like a magnet, and it just might not be available. Mm. Now, when you apply a foliar application to the leaves, it goes into the leaves, and uh, that's been very well documented and proven. You're not fighting your uh, negative. I, I you sh you're not fighting. I don't want to say the bad. You're not fighting the. You're not fighting the struggles that you will fight in a soil environment. Absolutely. Yeah. And you're not going to fix the soil. No. You know, this problem is going to be reoccurring, yeah. but at least you're getting the nutrients to the plant. It's like an IV, you know, so you're yeah. getting it what it needs now sure. to maybe divide some cells, to make a row, a column, maybe even to stop a portion on that pod. So you can make targeted applications to the foliage and uh and really solve a problem an immediate problem sure um any tips on foliar feeding i <laughs> we i don't know i would I, look at me my my cornfields would look like golf courses you know you'd be putting on them <laughs> so that, that's your dream of a field that might not be the most uh the best return on your investment right sure so now we have to take it so that the answer to that oh i would apply really complete fertilizers i would try to apply in balance everything the plant needs and i would change the ratios i'd have you out there multiple times a year you know people right. are going to kick me off of the farm sure uh so <laughs> Some of the things that we're doing in agriculture, we, we, we'll have to target some of the problems that we know that we have. We have a few problems. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we use a lot of different phosphates to grow plants. And, uh, you know, maybe it's an ortho or a polyphosphate, one of maybe a 34% phosphorus that's going out there. 1034-0. Well, I didn't want to point my fingers too much. I can ask because I'm 10, a farmer. 1034, 1137. <laughs> right. I confirm, but I can nod. Map, dab. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's, yes. This goes on. These are high, these are, just think of it, we're providing phosphorus. It's an unbalanced phosphorus source. Sure. So when it goes, it's going to have a lot of interactions mm -hmm. if you are using uh 1034 o i don't care what your soil test says you will have a zinc deficiency every time because the phosphorus is competing with the zinc and phosphorus is stronger so phosphorus wins the fight against zinc so one of the things we can do instead of a throwing the kitchen sink at the field you know is make sure we're if we're using 1034 o that we're adding zinc and then maybe we want to add that zinc as a foliar application so we avoid the tank fight or the soil fight the from the ground. I see. Um, another one, and um, listen, I, I, I'm a big fan of herbicides. My master's in weed science. I, I did a lot of work with a, a chemical, uh, bisbeerback sodium. And uh, anyway, I love herbicides, you know, because I know if you've ever pulled weeds— you love herbicides too, you know, and I also know that without weed control, you don't have a crop. Without seed, you don't have a crop. You know, everything else, fungicide, insecticide, I usually have a crop, you know, if sure. I don't have it. Sure. Without weed control, you don't have a crop, period. Uh -huh. So we, I'm not going to be Mr. Anti-Glyphosate here. You know, we have Liberty, we have Roundup, we have, we, well, glufosinate, glyphosate, uh, but the way these work, they stop amino acids in the plant, you know, very specific aromatic amino acids that are made and are necessary for that plant to grow and develop and make babies. Babies are yield. Yeah. So they're also very strong chelates, like the molecule. A chelate in Latin means claw. So it comes out of the old crab claw thing. So really? chelates work by taking, if you think of like a calcium or a zinc or a manganese, they, uh, they're these little balls with charges on them, like magnets. So if you throw them against the wall, against the soil, 
against even in the tank, they start to stick to things. And when they stick to something, they're not as available. So we chelate nutrients, and all that is is a claw that wraps the charge, and then it doesn't stick to the soil or the tank, and it can release into the plant. Mm. So, you know, another time, these herbicides, they also function as strong chelates, and something like a glyphosate or a glufosinate, they're not going to release the nutrient to the plant. Or sometimes when they, and herbicides are great at going into the plant, you know, they're, they're designed for that. Sure. So they can actually get inside the leaf and chelate the available zinc or manganese in the sap. Interesting. So for how long? Uh, for the act, it probably, so you could probably measure it for seven to maybe 21 days, give or take. Still, say you take the media and say it's 15 days, two weeks is a big deal in a growing season. That's lost. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then the further north we get, the worse it gets because shorter you have such frame? a shorter growing. F- yeah. Interesting. You know, in Texas, what's a week really? We, I mean, we. Right. <laughs> I mean, we're planting in January. You're planting 120 yeah. day corn. Oh, probably. yeah. You'd yeah. get away with it, right? But no, someone's gonna jump in the comments now and be <laughs> like, like, "Hey, hey, 120 day corn." <laughs> uh, forgive me. Okay. But we we do a lot of work. Again, I was saying the fringes of of farming society, you know, and yeah. we're getting into the Dakotas. You get out there by Bismarck. I mean, it's almost got 24 hour nights in, in the winter time. Mm-hmm. I mean, this, we're talking really, really short seasons. Yeah. So it makes a really big deal. Um, but so what we like to do whenever we're applying a herbicide is to add the micronutrients that those herbicides are going to chelate. Uh, everyone, after you spray your herbicide, you notice how your beans or your corn kind of looks a little angry. It's a little bit gray. Its leaves aren't as flat anymore. That's a stress response. Even on GMOs, you know, like let's say we're GMO, uh, we're glyphosate tolerant or glufosinate tolerant. The plant's like 99.99% tolerant to that herbicide. But if you think of how many cells are in a plant, it's, it's billions, trillions of cells. So even that 0.00001% not tolerant, it creates a lot of stress. Mm. So we like to do things to stop plant stress with the herbicide. That's a good, I call it farmer-induced stress. Yeah. So we target the ethylene production. And I also like to add my zinc, my manganese, corn and zinc, Corn always needs zinc. Beans always need manganese. Like to do a little bit of nitrogen at that timing so I can catch that nitrogen uptake curve that everybody's looking for right between V4 and VT. Got to remember V6, Mm -hmm. V8 is when corn's making rows and columns. So pre-tassel, you can start to make, increase your yields. You know, you can make bigger changes. But once those are set, then we can just protect the yield that we've set. I see. Just so happens you have something. Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you, we, we. I mean, you offered through uh, offered through us. What's what's that product, Robert? Yeah, so my company is Ag America, and we've yep. partnered with Singular Agronomics to help farmers directly. Mm-hmm. And uh, we do make a, a polyamine chelated fertilizer. It's an eight zero zero has nitrogen in it. We got a little bit of boron in there to increase that source to sink relationship. Some sulfur because the sulfur is really going into the proteins, and then it's got that manganese and it's got the zinc. And that's the that's that is greatly that's basically its purpose is to offset the stress that we induce on the plant with a herbicide application. Uh, it's meant to provide the food sources Got it. from that herbicide application. Yes. Got it. Okay. Um, See, that's the herbicide I'm going through. Guys, if you've liked the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full-length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major podcast platforms. Um, We're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, et cetera. Check it out for a lot more content.